What's up everybody? Today we're making this dresser top ballet box with a lid. It's four inches tall, ten inches long, six inches wide. The top pivots in place with a 3 16 inch metal pin and the whole thing is held together with basic joints. We've got a groove that holds the bottom in place and rabbits that hold the sides together. Let's get to work. Okay, here we go. I'm going to look through the scrap bin to try and find a couple of pieces I can use for this project. And uh, I'm going to find a wide one right here that is uh, approximately the width I need for the top and bottom. But I'm actually going to use this for the top and find a separate piece later on for the bottom. Here I find a narrow piece that I think will work great for the sides of my project. Now both the sides and the top piece will need to get surfaced at the planer to a half inch thick. First, I'm going to start with the side piece, or will become the side pieces, and surface that down to a half inch. Once this goes through the planer, I'll be heading to the table saw to rip it. Now, this piece was jointed um, before we head to the table saw to make this, this rip cut. Check for blade height, move the fence over to three and a half inches, jointed edge goes against the fence, and I'll have a piece that I can use for the four sides. Once that rip cut's made, I'm going to adjust the blade height and the fence for a groove cut. Now I'm making, going to make two cuts with an eighth inch blade for a total of a quarter of an inch. This quarter inch groove is going to run along the inside. At this time you can choose which face will be the inside face and which will be the outside face. After this initial cut, I'm going to check for accuracy and in this case the depth of the groove is not quite deep enough and I'm going to raise the blade a small amount and make a second cut. The second cut is in the same location as the first one, the fence has not moved. Once I'm satisfied with the depth of the cut, I am going to move the fence over an eighth of an inch and make that second cut for my groove. This groove again is a quarter of an inch wide, a quarter of an inch deep, and a quarter of an inch from the bottom edge. Now that I've got a groove, I can go to the uh, miter sled, cross cut sled, and I can square one end and then I'm going to measure from the blade and mark it so I can apply a stop block to the actual cross cut sled and I'm going to cut two pieces at five and a half inches. Now the two side pieces that are short and the two side pieces that are long uh, I have specified lengths. The, the short side pieces are five and a half and the long side pieces are ten. Here I'm just measuring for 10 inches and again clamping a stop block to the cross cut sled. More importantly than those, those two pairs of pieces being exactly 5.5 or exactly 10 is that those two pairs are exactly identical to one another. So two pieces that are identical at close to 5.5 inches will work just fine. Here I'm setting up a stop block on the fence with a dado blade and I'm going to uh, cut a rabbit into each end of the long side pieces. Those rabbits will hold the four pieces for the project together. Here it looks like that rabbit is not quite deep enough, so I'm going to raise the blade a little bit. I want the depth of my groove and the depth of my rabbit to be at the same uh, measurement, in this case a quarter of an inch. Once I've got the depth set correctly, I'm going to adjust the location of the stop block and the fence so that I can get the proper width of cut. So I'm just going to tap this over a little bit and make a secondary cut. And I think I'm satisfied this time with that. Now, when I make the second, third, and fourth rabbit cuts on the ends of the long side pieces, you'll see that I've got a small amount of material hanging off, and I'll have to make a secondary cut to remove that material. So the first cut against the stop block and then the second cut to remove that uh, kind of extra material on the end. And once I've got all uh, four rabbits cut, I'm just going to double check to make sure they all fit together. Looks good. Now I'm going to resaw a piece of wood for the bottom. And this piece was approximately three quarters of an inch. I need a quarter of an inch. And so I get two pieces that are close to three eighths. And here I am at the, surf at the planer surfacing this piece to approximately a quarter of an inch. It's going to be a little bit on the thick side and we're going to send it once through the drum sander to get a perfect uh, fit for that for that groove on the bottom. So here it looks like it's almost going to fit 
and I'm going to set up the uh, drum sander for the final pass. Once I'm satisfied that the thickness of the bottom piece uh, fits in all four grooves, or the grooves of all four pieces, I'm going to mark out the bottom piece for the length that I'll need for my project. In this case, a little bit more than 10 inches to be on the safe side. And I use the long side piece to uh, gauge the length of what I'll need. And I'm going to head back to the table saw and cross cut this in the sled, making sure both ends are square. Now I'm going to put together the three sides of the project, the short side and two long sides, and make sure that the uh, rabbits on the ends of the long side pieces fit with uh, a short side piece and the bottom. In this case, I'm checking to make sure everything's tight and it looks good. If I had gaps there, I could then go to the uh, table saw and I could rip that piece down to its uh, proper width. Here I am marking the middle of the rabbit and I'm going to use that measurement as a gauge to uh, cross cut this piece to its uh, rough length. Now I can always take a little more off so I want to be kind of conservative here. After I cut this I'm going to fit all four side pieces with the bottom and make sure that everything fits together without gaps. Always important to do a test fit without glue or before you glue uh, to make sure everything's going to fit the way that it should. So I'm just double checking all the joints inside and out, making sure everything's flush and tight. We're going to head to the glue table. I'm going to run a bead of glue on uh, each one of those pieces where the pieces are going to fit together, obviously in each groove and in each rabbit. I'm going to smooth the glue out in the rabbits and then assemble the project. I'm going to use five clamps for this. One bar clamp you can see right there, that orange one, and that's going to hold the short side pieces in the rabbits uh, kind of temporarily and make sure that things are kind of tight and square. I'm going to snug up uh, the C-clamps until I'm satisfied that all of those joints are tight and square and then I'm going to carefully wipe out any glue that uh, squeezed both to the inside and the outside. Obviously it's better to do this while it's wet and way more difficult when it's dry. I'm going to double check the bottom and when I'm satisfied that everything's been thoroughly cleaned, I'm going to let that dry overnight. I'm going to come back after it's dry and uh, get a rough length for my top piece that piece was surfaced to a half inch in thickness. So I'm kind of just determining which part of that piece I want to use. I like that green and I'm going to turn the box upside down and get a rough length and a rough width. So I'm going to mark each side and then take it to the table saw, cross cut it and rip it. Now I want to make sure that this piece is a little bit oversized for the size of my project. That's why I use the project as a gauge for marking it out. Here I'm going to rip it, make sure that both edges are parallel and square, and then I'm going to cross cut it one more time and make sure that uh, the ends are square and it's the rough length that I need. Back at the bench I'm going to measure for the hole that we're going to put the pin in so this box lid will pivot. Now I'm just marking from each end to the middle and getting a mark uh, both on the top edge and uh, across the back. I've got a 3 16 inch pin and a 3 16 inch drill bit. Here I've got a doweling jig and I'm going to use the line, the white line, and line it up with the line that I've got drawn on the back of the project. Again, at this point I would determine which of those two long sides would be the back. Once the uh, line is lined up with, between the doweling jig and the back of the box, I will drill a hole through the doweling jig and that's going to keep uh, that hole square um, to the top edge of the box, what is now the top edge, and centered in the box uh, back piece thickness. Once that's done, I'm going to glue the lid piece on. Here I am just running a bead of glue around and then smoothing the glue out. I'm going to use uh, a little squeegee technique with my thumb and my index finger to get the glue to ooze to the outside. And there you just see I got glue on the outside half of the uh, thickness of the, each one of those pieces. I'm going to use four C-clamps to hold the lid on. 
and let that dry. I want to make sure that it's nice and square and I've got a little bit of overhang on each side. Not Whatever amount of material that is hanging over from the lid piece is going to first get cut at the bandsaw. I've got a sharpie marker line drawn on the underside of the lid to guide the blade because I obviously don't want the blade coming in contact with the side of the project. You can see that line here as I cut the, the long side. Now what I'm left with after this cut is about a sixteenth of an inch overhang. So I'm going to go to the router table and I'm going to change the bit to a flush cutting bit and I'm going to remove any excess from where the lid meets the box or where I've got excess overhang from the rabbits. I'm going to lower that down so the bearing is about five eighths or three quarters above the surface of the table and then I'm going to cut the long sides first. This is important because you want to limit tear out. So we want to have just about a sixteenth of an inch. You don't want too much. Um, too much will create tear out and I want to do the long sides first. When I do the ends of the box, I want to do the rabbit, then the lid, and then the rabbit in that order. So you can see here I'm doing the first rabbit, then the lid, and then the other rabbit, kind of in that U shape. That will also limit tear out and go slow at the end of each pass. So now I've got a clean, flush surface on all sides where all pieces meet. Next step is sanding. I'm going to sand the entire outside of the project, starting with 100 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to sand, obviously, the short sides, the long sides, and the top. The bottom, I'm not that concerned with at this point, And we will be taking care of that at a later step when we get to the drum sander. Once I'm done with 100, I go to 120. And I just want to make sure that I'm removing any imperfection that's on the outside of the project. Glue that we, did, that we missed, uh, pencil lines, marker lines, any imperfection or dent or scratch needs to be taken out with the lowest uh, grit sandpaper. In this case, for us, it was 100. When I'm done with 100 and 120, I go to 150. And with each successive step, I'm just getting a smoother surface and I'm removing the scratches from the previous, uh, previous grit. The last step in the process is going to be 220. And when that's finished, I'll have a very clean surface uh, free of imperfections and then ready for the next step which will be cutting the lid off. I'm going to mark the the placement of the blade um, on the bottom side and uh, you'll see this line here is close to the thickness of the stock but not quite. And I'm going to use that as a gauge for the blade and I'm going to then set up the fence so that I've got a little bit of an underside lip to the lid piece. I cut the short sides first and then the long sides, you can see the lid does not come off of the box yet. The lid is actually removed at the bandsaw and although this does leave a little bit of material uh, on that top and bottom edge, um, it's safer than trying to remove the lid from the box at the table saw. So here I'm just taking the underside of the lid, running it through the drum sander and making sure that all four sides of that part of the project are flush and flat. Again, I'm doing the same thing with the bottom of the box, and I'm going to do both the bottom edge and the top edge. Now, once I've taken the, the two parts, the top and the bottom, apart from one another, I need to make the depth of the hole that we created for the pin a little bit deeper. I'm going to do that both in the uh, bottom part for the box and then also for the lid. Currently, the hole for the lid is only a quarter of an inch deep because that's how thick the lip is. So we're going to drill into the actual top piece. With both holes drilled to their proper depth, I'm going to insert the pin and double check to make sure that the lid pivots and functions as it was intended. I'm going to apply the uh, first and last coat of finish on camera. Uh, I figured I would save the sanding and the finishing detail for another video. It just would take too long to explain here. But we did uh, apply four coats and we did sand uh, between each coat. Sanding between each coat helps to uh, create a smooth surface so that the uh, coat of finish that is applied after you sand uh, goes on really, really smooth. So I'm going to let that dry overnight between each coat. You can see how well that oil kind of brings out the grain, especially on that top piece. And lastly, I'm just uh, giving one final coat on the outside.
making sure that I uh, wipe off any excess, and fingerprints. And lastly, make sure you dispose of your gloves and rags properly in a fireproof can. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this valet box. I will leave the dimensions for all the pieces in the description below. And feel free to comment, share, and subscribe.